Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications with Glenn Sanders from Zaxcom. Glenn, thanks for being here. How are you? I am very well, Nick. Thank you for coming. Awesome. Really appreciate it. We're at booth 2934 from NAB 2023, right? I assume so. All right. I hope so, too. I don't want to give anybody misinformation. Um, We're live, so uh, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching, uh, please put them in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube, and we will get to them uh, towards the end. Uh, But, Glenn... Uh, you brought a scale. I did. Um, we brought a scale because we really wanted to point out um, how heavy a sound bag with a Zaxcom system can be. This bag and the Nova recorder with eight channels of wireless, IFB transmission and remote control uh, is 8.6 pounds. And what's in the bag is just over 5 pounds. Mm. So... You know, we, we kind of say we're home with a five-pound sound bag. It's actually a little heavier with the new FP7, mm-hmm. which we just came out with. The FP7 gives you seven extra pots to control the inputs, and those can control uh, any of the channels coming into the recorder. The Nova has five pots of, it, of its own, and those could be assigned to be faders, transmitter remote control, input trims, what have you. So, you know, with this bag, you don't need separate receivers. You don't Mm -hmm. need external cables. The only thing you really have to have in the bag is just the Nova, and you're all set with eight channels of receiver, Mm -hmm. 16 channels of recording. And Uh, to say the weight includes the battery. This is not... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, The five and a half Mm -hmm. pounds does include the battery. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it comparatively... You know, you're looking at something that is, uh, you know, easily less than half the weight of comparable gear and sound bags. Yeah. And so the extra 2.8 or 3.8 pounds, that's the bag itself. That's the bag itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The gear is, uh, like I said, it's just just over five pounds. Um, you know, so if you're out there doing ENG all day long, you don't have to carry around a 20-pound bag. Mm-hmm. And the thing about this setup is it does things that no one else does. Mm-hmm. You get to remote control the transmitter gain yep. from the battery, uh, from the battery, from the bag, mm-hmm. which is essential because without transmitter remote control, you have at least 5 or 6 dB higher noise than being able to control the gain on the transmitter mm-hmm. to the appropriate level. Mm. So to achieve the best audio quality, you've got to remote control the gain on the transmitter or you're just leaving dynamic range on the table. Yeah. And that's crazy. Cool. Well, let's, so let's move on from bag world. And you've got this beautiful cart set up. Uh, so let's yes. scoot over here and take a look at this cart. Um, so I know we've, we've done a lot of videos on about Zaxcom and about each individual piece of equipment. Um, Let's talk about what you've got that's what's new and you're excited about for the show. Sure. Well, what we've come out with for the show is the RX-8 remote control. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't do this in any kind of haphazard way. Mm -hmm. Uh, What we have is we use our GUI bridge, and you take the GUI bridge and you plug the Ethernet Mm -hmm. either directly into the RX-8, mm-hmm. or you can plug it into a switch, and in that way, you can have your Dante going out to wherever the RX-8 is, mm-hmm. and you've got your remote control, and you can remote control it directly from the cart. Mm-hmm. This monitor plugs into the HDMI connector on our GUI bridge, and it gives you control of multiple RX-8s. Mm. And besides having that local control, it's uh, set up with a web browser. Wait, show the cats. No, no, just go oh, back the cat? The cats, yep. You want to see the cat? I think it's important. There you go. So there's my cats. There you go. Hello. Got to have cats. Yep. Um, so if I go back in here, and you made me get out of here. So here you've got the same interface on your phone, and you can control this through any number of phones mm-hmm. or any computer, any any Apple product, anything with a web browser. Mm -hmm. So there's no software that you load on the phone. And you're able to control multiple RX-8s with this. We can see receivers in dual mode, in single mode. And in fact, if I turn the tone off on my transmitter, you can see the tone goes off. 
there's a boom mic that's being received, so there's tone coming mm -hmm. from that. So I'll turn the, uh, the tone back on so all the receivers pick that up. So you're getting the audio level, you're getting the RF levels, you're able to change frequency, you're able to change modes, mm. uh, you're able to do everything that you need to do mm. uh, remotely. So that's, that's new for the show. Mm -hmm. This will start delivering probably in a few weeks. Okay. Um, and there's no cost for this. Uh, there is a cost for the GUI bridge, mm -hmm. um, you know, but that's, that's actually a pretty, pretty low cost, pretty nominal, yeah. low cost thing. And just, uh, Peter, you want to get a quick shot of the GUI bridge and the Ethernet set up down here? So this is, a, I mean, this is a pretty small cart. So there's a Baby Zeus, the GUI bridge. Uh, is that PoE insert? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's PoE there so that you can basically remote the, remote the RX-8 with mm -hmm. only the Ethernet cable yeah. providing power, remote control, and 16 channels of Dante audio. Mm. So there's only one wire going out right. to it, which I think is pretty amazing. So there's one, there's one Ethernet cable that allows you to rote, remote this? One Ethernet cable. Mm -hmm. There's no need for multiple yeah. cables or external power. What I'd like to point out here is actually this cart, uh, and Eric Ballou will be along to talk about the mm -hmm. cart later, but what we have here along the lines of a light sound bag is the smallest, lightest, most functional mm -hmm. cart you can have. The Aria mixer is available as 8, 12, or 16 faders. Mm -hmm. And what's great about it is you've got the trim pots on the Aria, mm -hmm. and you're not you can control anything with that in terms of the microphone preamps on the transmitter. Yeah. Again, getting 5 to 6 dB better dynamic range than other digital systems. And you're able to put together a very small, very light cart. Mm -hmm. And if you just want to break away the 8-channel main part of the Aria, mm -hmm. you can go remote with just the sound bag and the Aria panel. Yep. You know, I think it's the most versatile panel in the industry because mm -hmm. you know it certainly breaks down to something that is usable remotely size wise and comes off the cart almost instantly so that's all really great there's a uh, keyboard wireless keyboard plugged into it mm -hmm. so that you can use this for entering metadata mm -hmm. and not that we're showing it at the moment but if you had another uh, monitor or a computer you could run Nova Touch as right, well right, right, and right. have the full metering and remote control of the Nova. So, Could you run it on the same um, Windows system if one was connected via USB and one was connected? Well, no, because the Nova Touch has to run on a PC. I see. So you get a PC kind of tablet, mm -hmm. and it's a separate thing. And I think that's Oh, and this is web browser. Uh, that's, that's a right. web browser. Uh -huh. This is just a monitor plugged into the HDMI uh -huh. on our GUI bridge. Oh. Yeah. Wait, this had, the GUI bridge has an HDMI out? It does. Oh, no kidding. Actually, it has two. It has two? What's the yeah. other one for? Yeah, so that's all really, really nice. I mean, the thing that you have here is you could just take the bag, and because the bag has got the receivers in it, mm -hmm. it's got everything in it, yeah. you could just basically take that bag and go off. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've got the RX-8 sitting in the bag, mm -hmm. but with us... You know, you've got the MRX414 modules. Already in the... Right. Yeah. So you can take the receiver module that receives four separate transmitters, mm -hmm. and you can plug it directly into the Nova. You can plug it into the RX-8. Mm -hmm. So you're very versatile yeah. in terms of, you know, getting return on investment because your wireless channels can be used in so many different applications. Right. So that's all so really good. Yeah, and this is essentially a 16-channel bag. Or could up to 16 channels. That's up to 16 RF yeah. channels mm -hmm. in that bag right now. Yeah. Yeah. But even just having the internal receivers in the Nova, mm -hmm. you know, most bags are usually very, very capable with eight channels of wireless. Yeah. But, you know, with us, you've got options, you've got flexibility. Power consumption is ridiculously low, mm -hmm. where you can run a Nova bag for easily almost a full day on a single battery. Yeah. So not only is it light in terms of the actual battery, it's light in terms of not having to carry multiple batteries to actually last the day. Got it. Well, let's, uh, let's kick it over to the internet and see what questions we have. Uh, Kendra, anything from Facebook or YouTube? 
Yes, we have a question coming from YouTube. Jim Keeney is asking, when will the FP7's pots be able to control other Nova functions like the Zaxnet gain and input trim? I would expect that would be sometime early summer. Um, there's not a lot of work to do to make that happen. We just have to get to it. And we've been really busy in, uh, in the lab, quote unquote. But it will definitely be controlling transmitter gain and input trims as well. Great, awesome. Uh, what else, Kendra? A couple more questions about the Nova. Will Nova 2 be Dante enabled? Uh, I can't say that it will be anytime soon. I'm not going to rule it out. Um, Nova 2, we actually redesigned from Nova 1, and we, um, we basically plan for the future with it. So while I can't talk about future features that we don't have, there are a number of things in the works for Nova. And will it morph into a supernova? <laughs> they usually do. Very good. Uh, and that, and to follow up on that Nova question, the pl uh, there was a question asking if there's plans to run the Nova through a GUI bridge. We we definitely have plans for Nova in terms of remote control that way, um, but again, I can't talk about future features because when I do, then on our on our Facebook page. You know, you get the questions, when's this coming or that coming? Mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone needs to know that, you know, Zaxcom is a company that, you know, we pioneered literally everything to do with modern location sound, whether it be the Diva with multi-track nonlinear recording, digital wireless, remote controlled wireless, um, never clip, you know, recording wireless, all that. We're not stopping here. So, you know, I think the interesting thing is that what Zaxcom does is we look at technology and decide where it best fits. Hmm. So there's a lot of technology out there, but if you can't make a transmitter that's usable because it doesn't run long enough or it's too big, technology for technology's sake is not what we do. Hmm. What we do is we make sure that we have products that are, you know, viable in terms of their usability, their size, their power consumption, their flexibility. Hmm. That's who Zaxcom is. And, you know, we'll have, we're working on a lot of new stuff right now and everyone uh, needs to be patient because uh, there are things coming. Great. A lot of enthusiasm about the Nova. Um, now from YouTube, Shelby Watson is asking, uh, like she was wondering what the reason for the two HDMI ports uh, on the GUI bridge, the logic behind that. Oh, only because the hardware that we purchase <laughs> comes with that. That's not a decision that we make. The, uh, the GUI bridge is effectively based on a Raspberry Pi. We put software in it, we modify the hardware a little bit, but that board comes with two HDMIs. In the future, Maybe it'll come with one or three. Who knows? <laughs> but we only use one. Mm -hmm. Jim was also, uh, Jim Keeney from YouTube was asking if the uh, GUI bridge could uh, live could live inside the Nova 2, offering some app control. Well, you know, you never know what will show up inside a Nova in 2. In the supernova. Uh -huh. um, because I think everyone knows there's an option connector on it for Ethernet that currently has nothing going to it at this point. Again, we're not going to talk about future features here uh, for all the reasons that we've talked about. And Jim is on our Facebook page. You know, Jim, you know you can ask me directly. <laughs> but no, no, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about everything we're currently doing. But like any company, future yeah. features are something we have to keep kind of yeah. close to the vest, I think is the term. Is it uh, the past is history, the future is a mystery, and today is the present. It's a gift. Uh, Kendra, anything else before we wrap things up with Glenn? That about covers it for today. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, I, I would just like to point out, you know, come by and see everything we do. We've got, you know, all of our transmitters. I keep holding up the ZMT4 uh -huh. because it's still literally our best-selling transmitter, and I think the leader of the industry in terms of 
you know, basically size, power consumption, runtime, internal recording, you know, all that the size of a Zippo lighter. So come by at the show and see us. And uh, after the show, we will certainly be available on our Facebook page to answer questions. And uh, I really appreciate uh, you all coming from Gotham Sound to see us and uh, see what we're up to here at the show. Awesome. Glenn, thank you so much. And uh, stay tuned for our next live stream in just a few minutes.